Hey gang, we're back. We're gonna run through the construction manager project that we've just completed on YouTube so you can see the breakdown of every video. Let's jump in and have a look at what we've built. All right, so in video one, we're gonna walk through setting up the models. So all the models that we've built here. So I'm just gonna zoom in here so it can be seen. Uh, so inside here, we're gonna be looking at setting up all this kind of structure and the reasoning behind that. So that's video one, um, that's called setting up rail, the Rails app and the models. And you can see we're gonna walk through migrations in Rails. And so what migrations are is basically just setting up database tables and the columns and then syncing those changes across our application and the database. So that's video one. In video two, we're gonna walk through setting up authorization and authentication. So what we're gonna be doing with that one, we're gonna use the um, authentication zero gem so if we have a look at our gem file in here, we should have authentication zero just here. So what this gem provides is basically a, a setup and a generator to add all the files we need to roll our own auth. So we don't have to rely on a third party here. And it uses all the built-in Rails tools to do that. And then we're gonna be using Pundit to do authorization. So using policies, we'll be able to say whether check if someone's a project owner or a client, if whether they're allowed to show or create, and then defining scopes. So scopes make sure that only clients only see the project they actually belong to. Obviously an owner or a project, like a builder gets to see all their projects and then admins get to see everything. All right, so that's authentication and authorization. In video three, we're gonna talk through creating projects and the basic styling. So here's our project screen. This is what we'll work through in video three. And then we're gonna add basic styling using Tailwind. So that's basically quite a simple one. In video four, we're gonna talk about setting up uh, service objects. So, or services here. So we've got this services directory with projects and these are basically little snippets of code that we run to do certain jobs. So basically a group of tasks we wanna do. So in this instance, we're setting up a new project. And what we wanna do here is we wanna assign its organization and then we wanna set up a sub project. So our project in Construction Manager can have multiple sub projects and we do this when we set it up. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about in video four. In video five, we're gonna jump in and actually set up the project view screen. So this is the, when you're inside the project. So I'll just bump this up a bit so we can see. So you can see in here, we can see the project, we can see its sub projects and then all the different things that we can do, quotes, invoices, documents and posts, all right? So we're gonna be setting up this basic screen in video five. In video six, we're gonna jump in and actually have a look at the sub project. So in here, we're gonna jump into this and this is the project, sub project. And then in here, we've got spaces. So spaces represent rooms inside of a house. And in here, we're gonna be able to set up this screen. So this will be the view project space screen. So let's see if we have one in the kitchen here. This is basically what we're setting up next. All right, so it runs through all the different items inside of that space. And that is video six. In video seven, we're gonna be talking through how all these items, right? So in here, you can see this is the walls, the floor. These are project items. And then you've got your fixtures and fittings, your dishwasher, your cooktop. So we're gonna be setting up that um, model and the controllers so that we can start adding in this functionality, the ability to add in project items to project spaces. And that is video seven. In video eight, we're gonna add the ability to edit. So we're gonna add this, so you can now go back in and make changes that you wanna do. And we're gonna change some of the styling. So we're gonna, as we work through the project, we're gonna make, we're gonna add more content and we're gonna to have to readjust how those things are laid out. Obviously, given that we designed or built this app without a design, we need to make these changes as we move along. So that is video eight. All right, so in video nine, what we're gonna attack is image uploads and attachment attachment upload. So we're gonna do that using active storage. So that's a Rails gem that allow, makes it very easy to upload files. It has a whole bunch of helpers. So those would be things like when we wanna add an image in here and show it here. Uh, this is a very cool one because active storage has a whole bunch of helpers to make showing these thumbnails easy as well. And also very simple to work with locally. And then when we deploy, it's very easy to use another service like S3 to store those files online. That is video nine. All right, video 10 is where we make this project actually shine and add the main features of it. It's the ability to leave a comment, all right? So we're adding this in here. We're adding this styling in here or the whole 
logic there. So there's adding comments and we've built this model so that you can add comments on other things as well. And multiple people can comment as we go. In video 11, we are going to add quotes and invoices. So these things here. So you can see you can add quotes with suppliers and the reference description totals, etc., And then you can upload your documents here. All right, so that's video 11. In video 12, we're going to work through the final touches. So this is just tight walking through the project and adding in little pieces that we think are necessary just to make it feel a little bit more polished. So I, like we've also got things in here that, you know, managing clients and team, adding users, adding projects, just working through and just tidying and polishing before we can actually deploy. In video 13, we're going to deploy this to production. So to do that, we're gonna use um, Fly.io, I'm gonna use this guy here. Very simple, it's a very short video because it was actually a very easy process, but this will actually show you how you can take this project that we've built locally, push it up to the internet and let everyone see it. And then finally, the last video in this block, is the ability to add rich text to posts. So in here, we've got our rich text editor and here you can type things and you can add links and you can add attachments. You could add an upload in here. You can do all sorts of stuff. And that's using the tricks editor with action text gem from Rails. So that's a really cool one. And that rounds off this first section of the series. There's obviously a bit more to go in this construction manager, but we release those in the future as the project gets used more and more. All right, guys, I just wanna give you a quick run through the construction manager project. So this is a project that we built from start to finish. And it's basically a way to manage fittings and fixtures that you get given when you build a new project. So you could think of this, you could use this as a renovator. If you want to renovate a house and you want to get a whole bunch of ideas on the board and your options and you want to share it with someone else to get decisions and talk about it and then actually finalize those decisions. Also track your budget. So I've got the project screen here. This is like logged in as a builder. So they'll be able to see their different clients, their team members. And then from here, they can add new projects and manage them all. And for instance, they jump into this project. You can see inside of this project, project can have sub projects. So these are for larger projects, but most projects will only have one, which will probably be the main dwelling. From here, you can have posts as well. So just think of things you want to discuss. So if you're working on an item and you want to discuss that item, post links and back and forth, basically idea generation. Any documents. So these are formal, formal documents you'd get from a builder or any document you want to store really against the project. Then down here we have quotes, right? So when building a project, you wanna make sure you're keeping track of your quotes because you could be approving a whole bunch of quotes but actually not know how much you're in for later down the road. And then here we have our invoices. So these are the actual things we need to pay, all right? So you can see here we've quoted this much but we got this much to pay, okay? And those would usually match up. And then as you dive in, so we dive into the main dwelling here, you'll have all the spaces. So with these spaces are like the different rooms inside of the dwelling. So if we jump into the kitchen, you can see here, this now has all the finishes and colors, and it also has all the fixture fittings and equipment. And then down the very bottom, it has inspiration. So you can dump a whole bunch of inspo, like you're like, this is what I want my project to look like. And then as you're working through, oh, there's even a furniture one here that we added. So you've got furniture, you've got fixtures and fittings. So as you go, you're like, I want this kitchen mixer, you can add it here. We're tracking changes here as comments. So every time someone makes a change, you can actually see that it happens. It's all tracked. It's very important when you're building projects like this. And you can edit, you can duplicate, you can delete. All these kind of things are just little helpers to make it easier to manage bulk, all right? So one of the things that we have in here is when you're inside of the space, you can actually duplicate the entire space, all right? So, and then I think, yeah, so if we have a main dwelling, you can edit see the budget for each area. So yeah, and then you can bulk create as well. So we've just added these kind of things to help a builder who's got a lot of stuff on. So some, some people have a lot of work. We just wanna make sure it's quick and easy. So yeah, if you follow on through the beginning of the series, you'll be able to watch how all the decisions and how everything's actually implemented from building it all the way to deploy. So hopefully you enjoy that and let us know if you have any questions. Catch you on the next one.